Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jerby Apiary. I uh, was had a comment that was given to me about the electric fence. Maybe a different way to wire it so that you have some alternating wires or having a ground wire so that all that's needed is having two points of contact where say a bear or anything were to touch a hot wire and a ground wire, they would get a jolt and then you don't have to worry about snow building up and then having a good contact patch on the ground. And that's something you can definitely do. And I was even thinking about wiring it maybe a little bit of the best of both worlds, continuing to have the ground wire in addition to alternating. So I'm gonna look into doing a little bit of fence rewiring today because we got more snow on the way. Granted, probably not a great likelihood of the bear coming out right now or the multiple bear that are in this area because uh, they do some sort of hibernation in the winter. But it's just good practice to keep your fence up. And if we were to get a warm spell and they decide to go out foraging because black bears will do that, uh, even during hibernation season, it'd be better to be safe than to be sorry. First, let's talk about electric fence connection. So the basic setup of an electric fence is you have fencing, which conducts electricity. Then you have an energizer that sends an intermittent electrical impulse through that wire. For this first setup, a ground rod is connected to the energizer in order to help with closing a circuit to give the electrical jolt if things are touched. So this is an all hot setup where you have a hot lead going into one of the wires and then the other two wires are all connected together, making it function so if you touch any of those red hot wires and you have your foot on the ground, you will get a jolt. For the alternate wiring, we're going to add a fourth wire up top so we can do every other alternation of a red hot wire and then also a green ground wire that will give us every other being hot, cold, hot, cold, or hot ground, hot ground. Where touching a hot wire along with a green wire will create a jolt. Because the ground wire is also still connected, if you touch the red hot wire and you have your foot on the earth, you will also get a jolt. So the risk here is not completing the circuit where you get green plus grounded earth or other green where nothing happens because the circuit was never completed, but you do have the advantage of not having to rely on the ground contact patch. Now, the way that I had this fence was all hot. So that means that all of the wires were hot and having some contact with the ground so that touching any one of those wires would give a jolt. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate every other one. We're gonna go hot, ground, hot, ground. And it would be a matter of touching one of the hot wires and a good ground on the ground or touching one of the hot wires and one of the ground wires will give a jolt. So why not already have this hooked up alternating hot, cold, hot, cold, instead of running all hot? Well, all hot means that an animal such as a large bear touches any of the hot wires, they're going to get a jolt. So any wire on there is gonna provide protection. It gives you a little bit more insurance and security as long as you have a good ground patch. Since I still have some metal T-posts that I'm using as addition to putting up a few of these plastic ones that you don't have to worry about insulation, I do have to put some of these insulators on in order to kick the wire off as I put my fourth wire on. Okay, the new top wire is rung. We have our insulator decoupler here. So I'm gonna get this cut off and then I could thread this on and we can get connected with the actual electrical part of this. This fence is not how I originally had envisioned it when I threw it together, but you have to remember I threw this together after the bear had destroyed the other one and this was a makeshift. So it's not pretty, but it's gonna work once I get all the wires arranged. Okay, here we have the four wire now fence. It's a little bit cleaned up. It's not perfect, but it'll get the job done, I believe. I'm going to use these to connect the wires to the fence itself, like I already have over here. Just gonna use this, I think 14 gauge wire, that way, and it's insulated that way. If it touches the fence, it shouldn't ground it out. Okay. 
So theoretically, we should have hot ground, hot ground, and we have them wired in directly into the energizer here that way with the two grounds and then two hots. All right, let's see what happens. I can hear the energizer clicking. Now time to check the electricity. You probably aren't gonna be able to see this, but this is on the hot, touching to the ground, and we're getting good signal. And go down to the next bottom ground, we're getting good signal, and we're getting good ground. Touch here, and getting good ground and good jolt. We have a protected fence even with snow or ground coming up to it, which is what we want. Of course, the caveat is an animal has to touch two wires in sequence, either here or here, or here and here, or if the ground were to be re-exposed, uh, that would work too. So there you have it. Now we have alternating hot cold on a very cold, it's about 17 degrees Fahrenheit day here. The snow's already been starting to fall, so we will see how this goes, but the fence should be pretty well taken care of now. And uh, yeah, a fun little experiment working on this. And uh, then I can decide in the summer if I want to make them all hot or just swap them around. Realistically, all I would have to do is just change those wires, the ones that are currently set to the ground, uh, and move them over to the hot. I could take three of them, make them hot, and one of them uh, be in the ground, or add more wires to the top, whatever, because it is a little bit low, although I don't think anything could easily climb over that that's at least a bear without running into it. Hopefully, maybe the deer won't destroy it as much now. Until next time, uh, if you have any questions or anything maybe I can try to help you with, or if I don't know it, I'll look it up and then I'll know it too. Just put a question in the comment field and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.